Welcome, Dr. Nasser. Thank you for today's session. We are looking forward uh, for the session. We can start now. All the participants are waiting. We are having more than 200 attendees. We can start. Uh, Dr. Nasser, please unmute your, your mic. We cannot hear you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kul aam wa tubu khair. Ramadan mubarak alayna wa alaikum jami'an. Wa azal Allah ala al-ghumah min ala ala majma'a. Dear all, from everywhere. It's my pleasure to be with you less than two hours and unfortunately what's happened the technology sometimes it doesn't help you. Uh, and my uh, first I would like also to thank Ms. Uh, Lamiyas, Ms. Amr, Ms. Mona for organizing this session and to be with you. My talking of will be about the demo system which is why and how and therefore there's two parts. Why it will be answered by the ligation of orthodontics and the evidence based uh, regarding uh, ligation of orthodontics. And how it will be, well, I'm talking about later on, the demon Q and the seven, seven keys for the succeed, the orthodontic to have good result. So when we talk about the ligation of orthodontic treatment, we should also talk about the orthodontic tooth movement as they are related together. Because the relation between the bracket, ash wire, and ligation, all these things, item we needed for the orthodontic uh, uh, tooth treatment or movement. Uh, there is a good quote by Dr. Prophet who said that uh, the optimum force level for orthodontic tooth movement should be just high enough to stimulate the cellular activity without completing including blood vessels and periodontal ligament. What does it mean that also by the research array, we noted that said light continuous force will ensure more effective tooth movement in the area with a cortical bone or with the bone with the marrow, with a few marrow spaces. So what's to make this one clear for us in clinical practice? What's the mean the heavy force or what's mean the light force for us? And what's the benefit for us in an orthodontic treatment or in the clinical practice? As you know, when we apply orthodontic force, there will be some, what they call some area tension aside and the pressure side, which is the side that the tooth will move forward. And depending on the force amount, Will the, the BDL will respond for to either will be undermining resorption or for a frontal resorption. Undermined resorption will occur usually due to response to heavy force, and while frontal resorption will occur due to response to the light force. Of course, we do not know exactly as the number that which we need uh, for amount of the force, but of course, we will see you now to ask the scientific evidence for that. But tooth movement just need light and continuous force and this is can be explained by this chart for example if we, if we took uh, the tooth movement in seven days uh, by millimeter uh, compared with the heavy force and the light force we can see with the light force the tooth move more than one one millimeter while with the heavy force the tooth uh, within the same period of time, the tooth moved less than one millimeter. What does it mean then? That means that mean for us, the more light force, the more tooth movement will be faster. So what's the relation, this one with the light force and heavy force, is the relation with the friction. And the friction, one of the friction items can be, uh, or causes of friction is the ligation. 
system more of a push, either elastic modules or steel steel ligature or uh, silk ligating active or passive all this can cause a friction friction also where well, there are total part of the friction well, there's something what they call a static friction which is during the initial movement of the tooth and the dynamic friction which is during the sliding mechanical of course, the static friction is high, higher than the kinetic friction. Uh, so the static friction is just when you like get through the tooth or, or the, sorry, the wire with the bracket and severe ligation, the, the more severe ligation, the more, the more static friction, which is need to overcome to move the tooth. And then later on, the sliding mechanical which is the, when, the, in the, uh, when we close the spaces or open spaces for the teeth. There is also three items that we should also know, which is friction, which is due to contact wire with the bracket and or ligatures, and binding created when the tooth tips or the wire flex, and the notching, which is what's happening usually when we are, there is permanent deformation in the wire. A good thing in orthodontics mechanics that friction and binding uh, uh, we we need it and notching we don't need at all notching and the good thing is the notching can be eliminated that we we, we can we can in our clinical practice we can eliminate it by not deflecting the wire more than that can cause permanent deformation notching and uh, fr sorry friction and binding we need friction in fact some people they said that uh, self ligation has no friction. No, every bracket with a wire there is a friction. But what we need, we need just light friction. We need the light as we uh, saw in the last slide. Okay, the, we need to have a light that is very low, that do not include the blood vessels around the tooth, so the tooth will move. So we need light friction, and also we need also binding. In fact, without binding, the tooth will not move. As you know, the, the teeth, uh, the teeth, it doesn't move like this straight forward. No, it is step and uh, move, step and move, and that it is the binding. And also, we need the binding to be minimal. So, with the notching, we can eliminate it. Friction, we need it, and binding, we need it. But we need it as low as possible, just to not include the blood vessels. Why? Because friction and binding and notching is equal to resistance to slide of the teeth. So the more friction, the teeth will be more resistant to slide. The more binding, the same thing. And the more also notching will cause resistance to slide. So why do you need to reduce friction? Because heavy friction can cause incisor proclination. Imagine that we have retrocline lower incisor and with a steel with the with a ligature that is still heavy and what will happen the teeth will go forward and which is proclined faster and will have more uh, reclination for the teeth and this is because of the heavy friction also make leveling friction is difficult and inhibit also the torque expression especially in the in the labor segment because the posterior segment is in hold too many extraction as i mentioned earlier uh, because the heavy friction, the what will happen to our incisor to the brookline, so we need to compensate it by extraction and doing other tract in the upper anterior. And once we do extraction, sometimes this is not acceptable for uh, for the patient. Well, I'm sure I'm sure we in our practice we met some patient that when you see their face or the profile is telling you, please don't do extract, please don't do. And but when you open his mouth, you see the severe crowding sometimes or reclination, and you find this is teeth need to extraction. So it is really difficult sometimes to judge should I go to the face uh, facial profile or treat the teeth. Of course, nowadays with the technology, hair technology, we can solve this problem without ex extraction, uh, uh, extraction by using uh, uh, low force orthodontic. Low force orthodontic can also help me to widen the arch 
ممكن باي جاست لايت انفورس كان ارش ويل دو اكسباند اكسباند اند ديفلوب اولسو ويز ذا لو فريكشن ات ويل بي فور مي ايزي تو اوبن ذا سبيس فور تيف اور اور تو كلوز ذا سبيس دون يور اكستراكشن سوري هاف تو ران ليتل بيت فور ذا فريكشن بارت بيكوز از وي مس ا لوت اوف تايم ديورينغ ذا ريبيرينغ ذا سيشن So the question was the friction. Friction is affected by bracket material, the bracket design, arch wire material, and ligation method, and bracket arch wire angulation and dynamic. Since we are talking about the ligation, so what's the ligation available in the market? There is many. So I will start by the conventional one, which is the elastomeric and the steel ligature. And elastomeric is more than 60 to 70 percent cause friction compared to the steel ligature. Teflon coated ligature also can cause more friction uh, uh, compared to the conventional. And the more also we do tighter, like figure eight uh, using the elastic modules, it can cause about two, 20, two, more than 200 percentage more friction compared to just normal modules shape. And self ligating uh, bracket and conventional bracket, self ligating with evidence, okay, show that it's less friction compared to the conventional bracket. Dr. Haridin mentioned that what's the ideal ligation? Ideal ligation to have good secure wire with a, with a bracket, full bracket engagement, exhibit low friction when we need and heavy friction when we need, easy, quick, also comfortable to the patient and affordable and assistant on oral hygiene. What's the conventional uh, conventional ligation? Limitation of conventional ligation is the inability to, as, uh, to uh, provide and maintain full arch wire engagement, of course, increase friction. Elastic, um, uh, elastomeric with the time or to the force will be decay, so it will be used that some, why sometimes we feel that we feel that the, uh, the the torque with using self, uh, with sorry, with the torque with the elastic modules sometimes doesn't work because the force decay from the elastic modules it will be uh, not useful. The ligature also can be displayed. Okay, time consuming, especially for the wire ligature, softer rotation, soft tissue rotation, wire ligature, and the elastic, and the elastic you can cause also black accumulation. I will go for explain that that. The last three with the example. I'm sure when you see this slide, this patient has excellent, excellent oral hygiene, and you can and you can see the gingival how it is also uh, sharp, sharp edges. It is as you see, it is excellent oral hygiene. But even with the excellent uh, oral hygiene, you can see the elastic modules how it is absorbed for the plaque. So really, with even with good oral hygiene, still uh, the elastic modules it's very uh, uh, good environment for the plaque uh, accumulation, and also for the steel ligature it might also can cause the soft tissue irritation. So let's have some spice. Let's compare in terms of friction between the steel ligatures and the elastic modules. Two center incisor almost they are rotated in the same. Uh, a degree and we'll see what will happen. One of them was ligated with steel ligature and the other one is ligated with elastic modules and see what happened in the first visit. See in the first visit almost the the the, the tooth that like the, the bracket ligated with the steel ligature is almost aligned compared to the one with the elastic modules. Some people said it's because it wasn't engaged enough. So I used figure eight. And work in the second visit, the same. The third visit, the same. The fourth visit is almost now corrected. So it took me about four months to use, uh, uh, to align the teeth if I use steel ligature or elastic reduce. So steel ligature can give me better result when I use uh, when I use it for alignment because it has less friction and we will see it in the evidence base later on. Now we 
before we compare the steel ligature with elastic needles. Now let's compare, compare steel ligature with self-ligating bracket. And you can see in almost in one visit, they are aligned both in one, in one visit, which is because of the misprotection. So how to reduce or to eliminate, reduce the limitation of the conventional ligation is one of the answer is self-ligating bracket. Self-ligating bracket, according to Dr. Kim, has said that the future of the dentic will focus in three main area, which is the 3D uh, imaging are replacing the 2D self-ligating bracket, micro implant as anchorage. And Dr. Also Prophet said that the future of orthodontics uh, is, will be the self-ligating. And Dr. Berger in GCO in 2000 said that considering the advantage of self-ligating bracket for the clinician, staff, and patient, they self ligating appliance may become the conventional appliance system for of the 21st century. Interesting, the history of self ligating bracket is not really new. It started in almost in nine, more than 100 years, or oh, 100 years, almost 100 years, and and you can see it is. Uh, uh, then later on, with the use of uh, elastic modules, the self ligating system is uh, reduced to be used and, and uh, or to, because it was easy to use the elastic modules uh, compared to the previous old self ligating. Then uh, in 1972, Onco started also self ligating. Then almost every one year or two years later on, uh, company uh, produced a new uh, self ligating bracket. And uh, from the 2000, every year uh, you can see a company is producing or manufacturing uh, orthodontic uh, bracket with self ligating. Okay. And up to then, uh, when I follow the manufacturer after 2010, I couldn't follow all the companies because almost every manufacturer for orthodontic material or product produce self ligating bracket. And in fact, there is now self ligating bracket clear. Now, even there is self ligating bracket in the lingual. Also. So, uh, this, this chart summarizes the manufacturing uh, of self ligating bracket that was really booming in 2000s, after 2000. How would you also classify the, the self-ligating bracket? It is very easy to be classified according to types, uh, according to either active or passive. What does it mean active? Active, which is mean that uh, when we set the wire, there is a clip, uh, one pressure in the in the in the wire to hold it okay and this is what they call it is active self ligating while passive it is only like a door sliding door you close and it will be like four walls okay uh, slot and this is what they call it is a passive self ligating so the active is uh, uh, there is a clip while the passive only door sliding door there's some bracket which is intermediate between uh, the active and, and passive, which is uh, become first passive during the uh, when it is small wire and then become active when it is uh, the wire and uh, size get larger. So uh, the good example for the active would go to Dr. Hansen, the Canadian doctor, who introduced the active subligating, which is a speed. Okay. So this is very good example. Somebody asked what's the, the good example of active supply gating. The first thing will go to Dr. Hansen, which is the speed bracket. And for the passive, also somebody asked what's a good example for the passive supply gating. Let's go to Dr. Damon, which is the Damon bracket, which is passive and developed in 1980s. So, Let's compare now the effect of supply getting bracket on friction with conventional ligature, active clip, and the passive slide. Conventional ligatures 
as you see, uh, it's elastic or still steel or teflon coated. They have more friction compared to the active, and we will see the next slide. And active is like a speed, innovation, quick, bracket, time two, and the passive is like a daemon, smart clip, and uh, praxis, and carrier. So both of them, they are, have, uh, can, uh, can they have some friction, but we'll see the amount of the friction on the next slide. So, what's the scientific evidence? The evidence available for the supply gating bracket or friction. Uh, in fact, it is, uh, I uploaded it in, uh, in, uh, in the slide share. It's about more than 52 slides regarding the evidence base is for the supply gating. Please feel free to use it, to update it, to modify it. Uh, you can use the slide, the same slide. I have no problem. You can use it. And because of the time, I can go also for the 52 evidence based supply gate and bracket. But I can give you the summaries. Uh, the summary is very interesting for the uh, evidence base for the supply gate and bracket. It's either yes, no, maybe which is sometimes it is confused uh, us to which we follow. We also a good example. Here, uh, there's a study by Dr. Banda said that the demo system corrected moderate crowding in patient 2.7 times faster than the conventional bracket. And let's say that another paper. The use of passive or active cell ligate bracket doesn't seem to affect the treatment duration for elevating initial crowding. And please look to the author. The author is the same, Blanders and Blanders. So some paper is uh, yes, and the other paper is uh, no. Another paper also by Dr. Fleming said efficiency of alignment in mandibular arch in non-extraction patient is independent of the bracket type. Alignment efficiency is largely influenced by initial irregularity. Another paper or recommendation, he said, lack of supporting evidence doesn't invalidate the appliance, which is the supply gating. Indeed, the pre-adjusted advice appliance also has little evidence to support its widespread adoption. This is also what's happened in the evidence. Sometimes it is, as I said, it's confused. And also the problems with the evidence, it is also when we take like this paper, okay, for example, by Dr. Bandes said in his paper that self ligating bracket do not have an advantage over conventional bracket with respect to the prevental status of the mandibular anterior teeth. And this is his conclusion. And what he used in his uh, experience, he used the clean black index, gingival index, calculus index, and probe index, which is the conventional that we use in the clinic. But when we do, there is another paper which is more advanced using the histology, it gives something different. And this is by Yamagoshi paper. He used uh, uh, measured the substance P, which is, this is uh, uh, neuropeptide. It's a, usually there in the cervical fluid when there is inflammation. And he measured it with the conventional bracket and the, with, the, with the demo system and to find once the, this substance B, B sorry, available to there, that means there is inflammation. Okay. And what he found that, he concluded, this result indicates that demo system inhibited increased the amount of substance P in the gingival fluid. Thus, the demo system is useful to reduce inflammation and pain resulting from the orthodontic force. So let's see if, uh, as I said earlier, which is sometimes confusing between two papers, and now also depending on the papers also, is it more advanced study or conventional study? Like Dr. Bandes, this is conventional. He used only black index, gingival index, calculus index, and he gave his conclusion. But when we come with advanced histology, okay, so it is given a different result. So really, every paper has its own limitations. So what we have to also 
and for evidence to think about it. Dr. Vodoros also, he compared the friction with the, with the passive supply gate and active supply gate and method type and elastomer. And he found that supply gate has the least friction. And this is compared with the many authors uh, and other papers. Also, there is another type of ligature, elastic ligature, which is uh, non-conventional elastic ligature. We found it was also have less friction was also compared with the self ligated packet because we, as you see in the slide, it doesn't engage or push the wire. So it's the wire is free. So that's why it has less friction. And this is confirmed that by friction was influenced not only by the type of packet and also by the ligature system. So what's my conclusion to you on the evidence? The con con uh, conclusion is you. I want to, I suggest to you to use mm, bring 1925 steel wire and bring four brackets, one passive supply gating, one active supply, one normal bracket or conversion bracket and ligated by elastic modules and one uh, ligated with a steel ligature. And you feel the friction by yourself and you will see the evidence by yourself regarding the friction. So the less friction you will see you find it and you can uh, later on uh, you do it and do your practice in your clinic. So. Finish the first part. Now I'll go to which is the how. The how will be for the demo system is for will be demo and queue. I'll explain two slides about it and then we'll go for the second keys and including also the torque formula. The demo and queue tool it has many advantage compared to Daemon Q and uh, I suggest everyone now getting the Daemon Q to get Daemon Q2 because uh, uh, there is a lot of development or improvement compared to the previous Daemon Q uh, in terms of the torque of the upper anterior there is uh, changing also adding some torque uh, new torque for, uh, for especially for the upper lateral incisor Okay. Sometimes we need to have a negative torque when we, our, uh, when the tooth is erupted palatally. So they add it in the demon Q2. There is another thing also, uh, which is the scribe line along the the wall of the of the of the bracket and also the base of the bracket. And this will help when we place uh, or position the bracket in, uh, according to the long axis of the tooth with the height uh, with the height of control. Also, uh, uh, the Demon Q2 it is built in with the, with the hook because the Demon Q before it is, has vertical slot, so we uh, so we need uh, to place the drop and hook if we need. But some of uh, Demon Q2, Q2, which is especially for the Primora, it is the the hook is built in on it, and uh, and, uh, and which is good to use it and instead of sometimes you need to use uh, the uh, uh, drop and hook. And drop and hook also available. Still drop and hook for the demon queue, you can use it, okay, uh, for the demon queue. More important also, okay, more important that the Sometimes with demon Q we face problem with the ligation, especially with the when you use power chain. Now they increase the distance between the wing and the base, and with the, you can see with the angulation in the right side of the, of the slide. Okay, so the power chain is on the hold and is secure. So it really it has many advantages. The other thing about demon Q2, no more elastic uh, plastic gig because demon Q2 has a plastic gig. Uh, personally, I don't like use plastic gig, and when I use it, even for Demon Q, I usually remove it and use only uh, depending on my eyes to locate uh, the bracket position. Because really, with Demon, the jig for me, it is really difficult uh, to clean the bracket or to uh, around it. So to, I use I remove usually that jig. So Demon Q2. Maybe they listen to me and uh, remove it now. So we didn't have any more the jig now. This is a scrap line, what I'm talking about it. 
and also the bracket description there is a green which is low torque and blue which is the standard torque and red torque. so still they have three types of the torques available and you can see uh, the bracket uh, for upper center transizer which is uh, plus two and the standard uh, plus 12 and the high torque is uh, plus 22. The high torque and low torque and standard torque it's available for upper arch just from the central sizer, lateral sizer, and while the uh, low torque and high torque and uh, uh, and the standard torque for lower from the from the central la uh, lateral canine and first premolar. So for the upper arch, the premolars is universal for all, and even the buckle tube is universal. And for uh, and, uh, for the lower, from the second premolar is universal for, for all. So this is the, in general uh, the bracket description. And you can see for the lower, okay, it's uh, low, low is minus 11, uh, and standard low also minus 6, and the standard is minus 10. And you can see there is no high torque. So if you need high torque, what you can do, okay, what, what you can do, you just you flip the bracket for the lower bracket. So it will be, for example, uh, let's say the standard low for the lower central size of minus six. If, up, if we flip it upside down, it will be positive. It will be high torque. Because in general, lower more is negative torque compared to the upper almost, almost high torque, which is positive. Positive torque mean, by the way, a positive torque mean the root move palatally, and negative torque the root move labially. And please remember this one, so later on we discuss the torque formula. Also, it has a color coded in the distal gingival, so shown the bracket. So the orange, for example, is for the lateral left, left lateral incisor. Okay. And in the door also, you'll find also the color coded according to the, the torque. So, if the, for example, this bracket will be, this is lower left uh, central incisor low torque bracket. The arch wire for the demo system, it's uh, you know, also, there is no upper and lower, it's one form for the upper and lower for the whole the cover night eye. And also it has two stops, and we'll explain the stops later on when the second keys succeed. And the size of the arch wires is uh, starting from, point, uh, from 0 0.013 ca inches copper nitride up to 18.25 copper nitride. And some also there is some steel wires and also our night tie wire with the pre torque and also there is our TMA uh, demon also with the torque. So I basically use would really only the uh, cover night tie uh, arch wire and uh, I need later so uh, torque more. This is depend in many either use more torque in the wire or select the torque from the initial. Treatment from the initial. So, talk now about the seven keys. I have four to five minutes now. Okay. And the seven keys uh, for the six years with the recontouring, which is torque, selection, arch wire, by, uh, bonding, disarticulation, and elastic coils. My history with the demo system also, I started the demo system in 2002 with my instructor, Spitford, in, in, in UK. And at that time, I used demo 2 and 3D. It was a really good bracket at that time because the, the door is uh, after a while is broke. But with the improvement later on, the demo 3 and demo 3MX, and then the demo Q, demo Clear, then clear two, and now they will Q2, and later on the results of them on maybe 3D will be available. So it's really every time the bracket uh, move uh, to solve uh, and 
or the clinical obstacle that we face uh, uh, to have uh, easier and efficient uh, uh, clinical practice. So let's talk about helicobacter first. If you have a tooth like the central incisor, okay, you can see uh, a few really do bonding at the same time without recontour or reshaping the teeth, the teeth or the tooth. You might face problem with later on in the term of the first order or second order or the third order because the really the tooth is not really normal shape to place the bracket. So we need to shape it to have good bracket position. And reshaping mean either building composite or recontouring by using hands. Personally, I like always if it's possible for for for, for me to recontour, I will recontour, I will not use restoration because at the end of the day, restoration is restoration. It has an end while recontouring it forever. This patient and natural uh, tooth structure. So composite might later on break, my discal. So if it's possible, always I recontour. If I do not jeopardize the tooth structure, I do recontour. So I hope to be to agree with me that go for recontour more than building if it's possible. This is the way also we recontouring. Okay, and why we do recontouring? As I mentioned, to locate the bracket in the right position to build up the smile arc for the axial inclination, which is the second or the third order, and the control for also the control of the first and the second order. Almost every canine, especially in the upper, it has a, it need recontouring, and that's why we need to recontouring also to have the height, the right height we gauge for when we place our bracket. So you need to reshape. The, the tooth before you uh, before you bone. So uh, instead of having sharp edge for the bracket, you can do round edge and should give you good aesthetic and also later on give occlusion, especially for the canine guidance. So remember that almost every canine is need to reshape it. So this is like this also central incisor you can see uh, uh, mesial part is uh, Working or ship, so and you can see how that also building up or or it can help you later on to place the bracket in the right position. Torque. Now, why torque is very important? Of course, torque it was important. Now nowadays it's become also more important because the trend nowadays we try to treat the the, teeth, uh, the patient without extraction. Maybe if we go to that little bit of the history of the extraction, according to uh, our doctor Mangle, okay, he uh, he mentioned that to treat the uh, to treat individual without extraction and that the arch can accommodate the teeth. Then after that, his student tweet, you know, he would go for the extraction. Then later on, the extraction rate with the, among the orthodontists reduce. Then they become increased. Nowadays, the extraction rate, if you can ask many orthodontists, we have example 10 orthodontists, and ask them what's the percentage of extraction, we will find it's less than maybe 50% compared maybe like 10 years back or 15 years back, it's more. And this is why, because of the new technology we have now in orthodontic in terms of supply gauging, in terms of also the TADs, also, and the screws, and class two correction, okay, appliances. So many advantage, many appliances is available. It's help to do not do extraction. One thing I would like to add, very important issue, and I always also tell my resident that when we treat a patient, we need to treat a patient not for today. We have to treat a patient for today, for tomorrow, and for after one year, for after 20 years. Okay, we have to think about the uh, the maturation of the soft tissue, 
and then we can decide. Okay, we can see if you read sulfur paper that even some patients with four millimeter, three millimeter exposed or uh, gummy smile, this one with the, with the aging it will be covered. So this is not really considered as a gummy smile because of the later on soft tissue will cover it because you're losing the elastin fiber, the collagen fiber, the lip will go down uh, because of the gravity. So it will cover the gum. So really you need to treat the patient, not for today. We have to treat the patient for tomorrow. A patient doesn't know. We know uh, uh, what will happen to him with the aging. And we have to explain to the patient what will happen to you in the future. So that's what we need to treat you, not for the result today, to be happy today, and also to be happy after one year or 20 years that you have good uh, broad and good supporting smile. So for that's why become now the torque uh, become more challenging when we use, when we want to apply this concept. Dr. Andros, when he developed his six and six uh, keys, okay, he was recommendation to have our central incisor okay, with the Frankfurt present is about 21 degree axial inclination, which is, I think this is uh, uh, what we need or what is recommendation to have the desired torque position. So if we have a retrocline upper central incisor, we need what they call it, hip, uh, high torque, which is can move the root more palatally. And while when we have procline upper central incisor, we need low torque, we do not move, we don't want to move the, the, the root more in the palatally, so we'd like to have it more in the labor side, so to have the, the good angulation of the, uh, of the inclination. That's why we need to have different torque in, in, uh, in different torque in, uh, 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 to choose to have to reach the desire what Dr. Andrews recommend, recommend which is to have 21 degree to axial inclination to Franklin horizontal. The question now, how I can select the torque? It's really confused to select the torque because it, should I select the torque from initial torque in the tooth or because of the position of the tooth, crowding, or the mechanic, or I'm using class two, class one, or class three uh, mechanic, extraction and extraction play in the system, supporting tissue, which is joint precision. So facial type, hyper or hyper, hyper divergent. So really sometimes difficult to choose. And the answer for me, it came from formula that I developed. And which I call it Nora Torque Formula, and I will explain also more about this Nora Formula. And before that, I'll give you what's the behind the Nora Formula. I like the quote what Dr. Pearson said: "The truth about the torque is not in the wire, is not in the bracket, is not in the facial inclination of the tooth. For me, the torque is everything." Really, the torque, it's not really, uh, you have recline upper central incisor, you will go for low torque to change the inclination. It's not light straightforward. It's not one plus one. Okay. There is uh, many factors, many factors who can control the, the torque. I'll give you a good, a good, another example. For example, even if you, you had adhesive material when your bond is more thick, okay, in some area, with, with a bracket base, with a, uh, with a bonding cement, the, this, this one, I'm sure you know that, this will affect also the torque. Placing the bracket also more gingival, or placing more the bracket in the palate and the labial, or will change the torque. Choosing the round, so a small wire, rectangle, or a large wire, rectangle wire, also will change the torque. The slots also. So the torque really is everything. So one thing is can do affect the torque. So that's why it is sometimes difficult to use uh, to choose. So we need something uh, to help you to light you to go for that torque selection. 
other problem also when I developed this talk, more talk, is uh, every individual, every, sorry, every patient has its own feature map. For example, A person has class two division one, and B person also has class two division one. Both of them, they have class two division one, but I'm sure their feature they are different. For example, A might have infected canine, B might have missing tooth or hypodontia. So even with the class two with class two division one, class two division one malocclusion with the same clue malocclusion, the the facial difference. So how we can use one talk of them? How we can use it? Impossible. The other thing which is impossible for the mechanic to apply mechanic for all patients. Class two mechanic is different than class three. So how can also, and you know that any mechanic can affect the torque. For example, class two elastic would affect in the upper central incisor, it will go retrocline. Uh, while uh, class three elastic, okay, but for, for upper central incisor, it will go recline. So, so also this is because of the mechanic, different mechanic, we cannot choose one record prescription. So we need also we choose something that compensate and work with the mechanic. The other thing which is very important to me is uh, why it's Noura. Noura is my mother name, Rahmatullah Aleha, Rada Yom, Rahmatullah Aleha Jimmy, Ummahat al Muslimin, the Hewan Amun Ulamwat, Rahmatullah Aleha, Rabana Jimmy Al. But Noura is uh, my mother. It's, uh, and by the way, it doesn't speak uh, Arabic. Noura it means it's like a light. So this form is lighting me, okay, when I choose the torque, it's giving me light, at least help me to guide me. And as you know, always the mother, we need the mother always and every time and everywhere, even we are young, old, child, we need. So your mother is your lighting, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this for Nora formula, it is really lighting me, how I can choose the torque and help me to choose the torque for the uh, uh, selection. And what's the item that I, I, uh, I use? Uh, what's the item I use uh, for this formula? Uh, it is nine item uh, that I depend on it to choose the formula. And each item I give the weight, for example, the bracket position, I give weight either standard, when it's, I give standard either zero or high, when it is plus one or minus one, when it, and I need low torque. And I will explain. All of, all of them, the weight is zero plus one plus uh, and minus one, except for number three, which is the recession. I get only the weight either. If there is a recession plus two, if there is no recession, I get zero. So all of them, as I said, it has a weight plus one minus one and zero, except the recession only has zero and plus two. And why we need plus two? When we have the tooth is exposed or the root exposed, you need to get it in uh, inside the, the bone. You need to push it either lingually in the lower or bilaterally in the upper arm. And since uh, recession is more health, okay, I give also the weight is more. I give the weight two compared. So if I like, even if I have later on calculate too low, okay, the, the it will give me too low with one recession, it will give me zero, which is because really I, want, I need to give the recession more important because it's this one considered as a health. That's why I give weight is plus two. And this is the formula, which is uh, for the upper arch, bracket position, slot size, recession, inclination, line of occlusion, extraction, direction of elastic course, open coil, class two correction, and the will explain. You can see the black boxes for the inclination. Uh, I do not consider or give a weight for the upper canine and the lateral incisor. I give just only the central incisor. For example, when a central incisor is brookline, uh, 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 the upper arch is Brookline, I just calculate the central incisor. I do not calculate the lateral incisor. 
So I will give the citron size that because it is proof line, I need to give it low. So I need to get minus one. And I will explain later on, I will, inshallah, it will be clear. Okay. So I do not, and also for class two correction, I do not include the, the uh, uh, upper canine because it has class two correction is like uh, to advance uh, twin force or four forces. This is what I mean, class two correction. Uh, class two correction. I do not also give weight for the canine. Also for the lower arch, I do not go uh, give also uh, for an inclination. Here in lower arch, the inclination also is not give weight for the canine, but uh, here I give the lateral, central, and sides. As you know, central and lower, central and lateral and sides are almost they are one, two, and they are can be considered as one segment. Okay, compared to upper, lateral, and central sides, they are different. But central, lower, central, and lower lateral sides are they are the same. So I give so. No, I need, I'll wait them for uh, uh, this formula. At the same thing, I do not wait uh, on our canine okay, for class two correction. Now I'll explain it. Okay, I have been less than 30 minutes. Inshallah, I'll finish, inshallah, this to cover the Nura formula and some of the bonding. Uh, as when, uh, when the, when the when all co manufacturers uh, the bracket okay uh, there is what they call it the green zone that where you can place the bracket which will not affect the uh, the torque okay and this green zone is about one millimeter on the mid crown of the tooth with us uh, and the reference is the slot so if we if we place the bracket uh, more sorry if, if i place the bracket uh, more uh, gingiva uh, we will lose some bracket that's why the tooth will uh, so we will lose some torque that's why the tooth will, will do what it will okay and so if i place the bracket more gingiva i need to compensate that okay, by given high torque uh, value to compensate because the tooth will lose some some uh, some degree of the, of the torque, so I need to compensate it. While that's why if I place the bracket more than green zone, okay, I'll give one uh, one value for the for the uh, in the formula. While if a bracket was uh, bonded, um, the bracket bonded more incisory. What will happen? The torque will be more, okay. That's why I need to compensate it with with the uh, with the value with minus value torque. So the conclusion here can be explained more. So I need for if I place the bracket more gingival, I need to give a value high torque, which is one degree. And if I place it uh, more incisory, I need to place it to compensate that one by giving low torque so to compensate because the torque will be more when I place it more incisory. And here you can see what will happen if I place it in the more gingival. See, that's why I need to compensate it and give plus one. I need to have, to have more torque. And here in the lower gingival, so that's what happened to more torque. That's why I need low torque. So Conclusion of that, if I'm placing the bracket in the green zone, I'll give standard uh, zero. If I place the bracket more gingival, more than in the green zone, I'll give plus one. If I place the bracket uh, in the sizer, uh, I'll give plus one, uh, sorry, minus one to compensate the torque. Other things that you should know also, which is the regarding a considered in the format, which is the slot size. Okay, and do you know that always there is a slot, which is the play between the, the bracket and the arch wire. And example for that, let's say if we have 725 uh, arch wire, the wire will play more in auto to slot 
from where to hit in slot. And, and that's why we need also to compensate it when I do mm, uh, selection for the torque. As remember that Dr. Perston, he said that about the torque, the torque is everything. So that's why I, I need also to consider the play. Okay. Let's go, let give example. Of course, by the way, the, the form you can apply for any bracket you need uh, system, but you can, but I'm doing now to, because it is a demo system, I'm talking about it for a demo system and I'm applying for the demo system. So here we know that the demo system, the upper working arch wire is 19.25 and the lower is 16.25 uh, uh, working arch wire. So if I'm using the 19.25 in the upper arch, I give zero. If I'm using in the lower arch, 16.25, I give also zero number. However, if I use it in uh, uh, smaller than 1925 in the upper arch, I have to compensate it so I get plus one. Okay, and if I'm using larger, I have to also reduce the, the torque that will be more that I need. So I have to write uh, shows minus one, so the number. And also for the lower arch, it is opposite. For uh, to compensate that, okay, have to, because uh, the, uh, as you know, the lower interior is minus. It's compared to the upper arch. Uh, with all of the torque is positive. So lower arch is minus. That's why for lower arch, if I use uh, larger than 1625, I'll give a plus for larger arch wire. And I'll give also I'll give minus one value for the smaller arch wire. Maybe some it is a little bit confused, but inshallah, the example uh, uh, will be uh, uh, clear, inshallah, more to you. The other thing, as I mentioned, that for the recession, when there is a recession, uh, I just give it plus two, and there is no recession, I give it zero. Why it is plus two? Because, as you said, it is, I'm talking about health, so I need something more health to the teeth, so I need to make the root more palatary or labia or longway. So I have to need use heavy torque, uh, sorry, high torque to place the, the road more better in the side. So see this case, by using high torque, what will happen? Here, better serves, the better road, the more better the road. Also for inclination, I use as I mentioned in the in the former, that only upper uh, upper central and lower central uh, lower incisor are included. When it's a procline, I need low torque, so I can crack. When it's a uh, root procline, uh, so I need heavy torque or high torque, so procline. And when normal uh, inclination, I use zero. And line of occlusion. I'm sure you remember the angle line of occlusion. I use this uh, 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 this formula, or, or sorry, this angle uh, line of occlusion to place and uh, to choose where is the, uh, how to choose the bracket the torque or the value. For example, as you see the, see the line of, uh, of occlusion for upper arch, it is in the mid back in the groove, uh, moving to the, uh, uh, palatal surface of the anterior teeth, while in the lower arch, it is from the buckle to the buckle cusp up to the incisal tip of the uh, of the teeth, of the anterior. So what I do here, I do the same line of occlusion in this arch, and I will see which tooth is labial to it or uh, or palatal to the line or on the line. For example, you can see in the right side uh, of the slide. The up the right the canine on the right side, right in the, the in the slide it is underlined. So that's why it place it zero. Okay, it's a standard. While the lateral incisor is erupted more labially, and I need to get it in. So that's why I need high torque to get it in. And also the central incisor is in, so I need to push it also uh, 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 labial to to push uh, it more labially, so that's why I need low torque. Left central incisor, blue, because it's in the line in the line of occlusion. And here also lateral incisor is 
when I tell you to the lines, that's why I also need to push it more uh, toward the labia. And if it's very clear on the left side of the, uh, of the slide of the canine is, is uh, out of the line of, line of fusion. So I need to get it in, so that's why I need positive one. And here, the arrow, explain more. Okay, the other for, uh, part of the formula, which is the spacing and extraction. I also uh, only center and size and lateral size of both and upper uh, lower can I include it. Just only include the upper and lower central and lateral incisor. So when there is a when there is a crowd when it is the case by crowding, just a this zero number. But when the, there is extraction uh, uh, extraction, I use the high torque, which is positive one. Why extraction and spacing? Because when we have extraction spacing, once we retract, what will happen? It will recline the anterior teeth. That's why we need high torque to compensate it and go to, to the normal inclination. That's why we need for the extraction and spacing, we need uh, plus one. For class two correction, uh, class two correction, okay, lateral, upper central incisor and the lateral incisor and canine will give high torque. Why? Because as you know that upper class two correction or class two mechanic, what will happen, upper anterior will go forward. Okay, that's all we need to compensate. And the canine, because we are using the elastic on it, what will happen to the root of the canine? It will go more also labia. So that, that's why we need to compensate it. We need high torque to get it in. Let's say, and, and for lower central and uh, uh, lateral incisor, we use low torque because it will break line. That's why we need to compensate it. Because of the, of the time, I'll, uh, I can explain the class three the mechanic is, this, is the opposite of the class two mechanic. Open coil also. Why I need uh, open coil to consider it? Because when we use open coil, what will happen to the central incisor here? It will recline. That's why I need low torque later on to compensate it. Okay. So the same thing will be applied in the in the canine between the uh, the two teeth. Class two correction. For example, advanced uh, to or uh, forces, any appliance that we use, we could, what's will, we know what will happen with the mechanic that we use class two correction, and that's why I, I try to compensate for what happened. You know, with the class two correction, the upper anterior will flare and lower anterior, uh, so the upper anterior will recline and lower will flare. That's why for upper, I need what we call it high torque to compensate and because of the flaring of the lower anterior using the class to correction, so I need to compensate by using low torque. That's why I give negative. Okay, let's have a now a case. Okay, so it can uh, more clear to you. And this case was class one uh, with the maxillary mandibular plane angle 29, which is almost a little bit increased. Our central incisor uh, inclination is uh, 99.4 degree, which is uh, minus 0.4.6, sorry, four, minus 4.6 compared to the normal. And lower incisor uh, inclination is 79.9, uh, so which is minus uh, 7.1 to the normal. When I uh, don't want to, Give more details because of the times. Uh, okay, like in uh, you can sorry, like you see, you see uh, this uh, case in general. Okay, and I'm sure when you see this case, you say this is upside uh, upright teeth, so you might go for standard talk or you might go for both mm, uh, uh, prescription or MBT prescription or standard. I don't know what you use, but. Uh, Let's take more traditional way we will think. I'm sure we'll go for upper right uh, lateral incisor, okay, which is erupted bilaterally. We'll place low torque, okay. And in fact, 
what's happening usually some with the conventional we take the bracket and make it upside down so instead of for example it's, it was positive one it will be positive eight it will be minus eight because we need to go to go uh, more in the in the in the labor side but the real thing when we use the formula it is not as a person said it is not only one thing that we can measure the torque there are a lot of things that can be measured the top. And that's why the, uh, the formula I developed. And we will see now, is it really we have to go for low torque in this uh, upper uh, right, right incisor or not? Let's go for the example. This is what will happen. Okay, for, I'll go for the right and lateral and central incisor on the right side only on this example because of the time. So we for upper right canine, so let's say we place the uh, bracket position in the green zone. So I'll play, give zero. And the slot side also I'll use 1925 steel wire, work large wire. So that's why I'll give a zero. Also. I'm not going to use larger or smaller. So uh, if I'm using uh, larger, I have to go for low, uh, minus one. If I'm using the smaller, I have to go positive uh, one. So, for the recession, there is no recession. Of, of course, you would not include it in the inclination. Line of occlusion, because this is out of in the, in the labial, okay, so we need to push it in, so we have to give value of positive one. Extraction spacing, non extraction spacing. For this extraction, we will give. Uh, 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 we will give uh, a positive one. Direction of the force, what will happen when we use the, the class two correction or class two elastic? What will happen to the root of the upper right canine on the left canine? The root will go more labially. So that's why we need to compensate it to go more heavy, uh, uh, to, go more, to push it more in the, in the vertical side. And here, because also uh, I'm using open coil uh, between the central and the canine, what's, what will happen to the canine when I use uh, open coil? The canine will go more flare. Okay, so that's why I need to compensate it, okay, by using minus one. So become the total here positive one. So I need to use for here height for upper right canine, I'll use positive one. Let's go for the lateral incisor. Okay. Lateral bracket position the same. I'll place it also the, the slot size will the same. Recession, no recession. Line of occlusion. See the line of occlusion is erupted more laterally. So it is so I need to push it out. Oh, that's why I need to minus one. So get minus one number. And extraction on extraction. Direction of the force, what will happen when we use class two elastic, it is a flare. So we need to compensate it by using high torque. Mm. Mm. Uh, so, uh, uh, sorry, when you use, sorry, I have to correct myself here. When I use class two elastics, what will happen to what's replied? Okay, so that's why I need to compensate it to overcome by plus one. So let's give me here. The total, well, well, uh, I'm not using an uh, open coil and the cluster correction. Okay, not there. So what happened? It's give me zero. And before that, if you remember, it was okay green, which is low torque. So it's now become a state of uh, low torque. I have to go here maybe to standard torque. So this is uh, we'll go on maybe this is number four. What I said about when Dr. Pearson said that torque is everything okay so it's really everything and this formula actually when i develop it i still need also modification that's what but it's built up only in my experience and when i think about how to sell the torque still also we need to modify it we can discuss it with me you need to update it also i'll be pleased and open for that to do it for the central size and the right size let's uh, bracket position uh, zero uh, because I will place in the green zone. Start side I will use 1925 steel recession or recession inclination because it is 
retrocline. Okay, that's why I need to procline. So I need white. I need to go for red one. Okay, I'll give plus one. So and uh, for line of occlusion, is the line of occlusion zero or extraction or extraction direction because also it will go using class two retro, class two elastic. What will happen to the upper interior? Retrocline. That's why we need to compensate it. So I'll go also for plus one. Here also open coil. I'll use open coil. Open coil. It will flare. So we need to compensate it with minus one. So become become good mean is plus one. Uh, I'll go also for the lateral incisor in the left side. Okay, and the as example because of the time. I'll use bracket sides, the bracket position, sorry, zero, because I've placed the bracket in the green zone. I'll use 1925, I'll give a zero. And here you can see why I give plus two, you can see the recession. Okay. And here I'll give plus two. Then the line of occlusion is zero because it's in the line of occlusion, known as extraction zero. I'm using class two elastic, it will retrocline, so I need positive one, so I give one. So uh, now I'm not using open coil, it's, and I'm not going to use also class two correction, so it's giving me plus three. See, so become this is the formula, okay, and when we select and we apply it also in the lower arch, but because of the time, I need to go uh, faster. So hope this is clear to you now. We compare uh, when you use what, uh, when you select the torque. Please, you can make a copy for the formula. You can uh, use it. You can ask me later on to send it to you. My pleasure to share it with you. Okay. Now I need to go quick because I have almost eight minutes to go for the uh, Damon arch wire. Why we use Damon arch wire widening? Okay, we uh, use wide uh, Damon arch wire. For static, for also now uh, brightening the size of uh, the size of what it is a book line for cross uh, cross bite correction and to gain spaces. This is you can take a photo for this one. This is the wire sequences that's most used usually used and always as uh, start by 14 cover not tie. Okay. Unless it is severe, severe crowding, then you can use uh, upper, uh, you can use 13 cover night. Then you can can go for later on the next visit at uh, 18, then lower 16. Then you can go for rectangle, which is 40.5. If I said that you always start by 14 cover night high as a run, also you need to start always with the rectangle 14.25 cover night high. Then you can go for lower 1625 and 1825 cover uh, Then you can go also for the stage three. As I mentioned, is, uh, uh, the work on arch wire for the demo system is upper 1925 and lower 1625 steel. Well, there is some stops. The stops, uh, okay, always the demo arch wire has two stops. You can use only one stop in the lower arch, you can remove it. Uh, and the upper arch, you can use both. Uh, both uh, stops, okay. Always place it anterior to the crowding and the most aligned to it. Anterior to the crowding, the most aligned. And be careful also, do not use it when you are using open coil for uh, the adjacent tooth because it will not move, help to move the other tooth. Or uh, during the rotation also, if they, you place it close to rotated tooth, this one will not also help to correct the rotations. So you need to always to place it anterior to the crowding in the most aligned tooth. A wire should be changed and, and, and the result is not a time. Okay, engage the teeth always. And these also remember that if you want to get the benefit of the demo system, don't use rubber bilateral expansion or TPA or lungual bar. Anything to hold, please keep it away. Okay. And when you insert also the wire, try to use it. By the way, the main demo system, what we need as maximum passive low force. The more less force that you engage it in the tooth, the more faster, the more result, the more development of the arch. Okay. Uh, uh, remember also, in the 1825 covenant, I do not need it more than six weeks because it might cause over expansion. How to do the steel wire? 
the steel wire you can when you reach the steel wire you can just go for a, a wax bite and you do enter irritation with the lower arch and you do your lower arch arch wire then from that which is do your upper arch and the lower arch will be 1625 and upper will be 1925 steel. okay sometimes you need to hooks to place and you can just sometimes you use what they call it in the hooks itself comparable hooks okay use composite especially for uh, by dr joel find that the female orthodontist it's difficult for them to squeeze is uh, the uh, the hook and the wire so i said just to use what you call it after you squeeze it use some composite on it and this is a not adhesion not cohesion i call it hand engine okay uh, and and bonding okay for the bonding we need to bond it that to have developed a smile arc, okay, which is the most important, okay, according to Dr. Safa. See, two here, two smile, but you, I'm sure you like the smile arc that, and this actually, to be, this is uh, one of the main reasons, two, two, in fact, there are two reasons uh, for me, I like uh, to use the demo system, which is uh, the talk that I give me, it's like engineering, really, that we think, and this is the beauty of orthodontic, okay, that, that you and oh, the other thing is really development of the smile arc for the patient. And because of the perceptive ligating and in the right position of the bracket, you will have very good smile arc. Uh, you can. Uh, uh, so the most important is is uh, to use what they call it, which when you do bonding for your smile arc. Okay, and I'll give you now a tip. For uh, always, when you place our bracket for the demo system, we place on the long axis at height of contour. And usually, height of contour is always in the mesial. That's why we need some some paper. They said uh, demo system doesn't correct that or regulative faster compared to conventional. Because uh, when you place the bracket as conventional, or the demo system okay, will not get the result. Correctly. So we need to place in the crown. Length, uh, long axis of the tooth at the height of control. Demo system, it is really a system. Do, if you do not use it as a system, I do not suggest anyone to use it. To get the benefit, but you have to use it as a system. Bracket, arch wire, and protocol. And you can take a, a copy for this slide, okay? And this is summarized from my colleagues, uh, demo user, and from the book that I read or papers that it's give me because really the gauge height for placing the bracket different from a lot of people different between 0.5 to 5 millimeter so i i place this one idea for me so to follow okay which is the central size that if i want to place it uh, i can place it for 5.5 millimeter if i have good uh, uh, smile arc but if i want to develop smile arc I can go more like six millimeter or 6.5 millimeter. And then from the central incisor, you make the, your reference. Central incisor, lateral incisor will be less five millimeter, canine will be less five millimeter. More first premolar and second premolar and almost molar. But remember, the second molar, you just always, always place it. Regards high angle case, low angle case, regardless, place it more occlusal because what we need. The second molar just we didn't need it for vertical correction. We need it just for the arch development transfer. That's why after a while during the treatment, we will cut the wire distal to the, the second uh, to the first molar, so the second molar will, will uh, settle. So if I place it more uh, the buccal tube more gingival, what will happen? It will cause us for the buccal cusp to extrude. Uh, sorry, palatal cusp to extrude, and this will cause problem in the in uh, in the bite. So, uh, uh, place more. And for the lower, okay, uh, if you have deep bite, you can place the bracket for four millimeter and open bite for five millimeter. And can I almost uh, 4.5? But for the first uh, premolar, second molar, uh, premolar, and first molar, and second molar, almost four millimeter. And you know that simple bonding uh, guide for you, which is I go back uh, 
uh, width, which is uh, bracket height for the upper arch, and and this is I make a copy a photo, okay, and this is for the lower, okay. And here, what I said once, I said the paper that it's not aligned uh, uh, demo system faster for a uh, regular teeth because of the place the bracket in the, this is bracket in the, in the long axis of the tooth, not in the height of control, we will not get the result of the demo system. So here, two center incisors, one of them uh, placed in the height of control, one in the, in the long axis of the tooth, see the one of the height of control, the tooth corrected in one visit, compared to the one in the long axis of the tooth. Point uh, 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 seven to seven always, okay, and try to include all the teeth as possible using the elastic, open coil, the blue bars. And by the way, in this uh, in this case, you need to use thirteen uh, carbon nitride with the light, and you can see with the light force the blue of the arch will be uh, easy. If you have rotated teeth, don't use a bracket then, uh, because really it is expensive. You can use any button, something, and correct the rotation then you can use the the demo system okay also if you have no space okay you can use button or have a bracket uh, to open the coil uh, and open then then you can use open coil and about one meter of space created a few four weeks which is what you need to uh, you need just only to activate the open coil just half bracket what okay what we need always we need light, light force for the orthodontic tooth movement, so we can give also the benefit of the system. Buckle tube, as I said, uh, for upper uh, bonded occlusally, and some people they said, uh, would, and, uh, should I use band or buckle tube? In general, buckle tube in the band, it is like a buckle tube when, you, uh, when it is uh, bonded and directly in the, the tooth structure because the buckle tube in the band is four walls also the buckle tube uh, uh, bonded in the and the, the tooth it's for four four walls the same thing with, with the idea of the demo system when the door closed it is find four walls but the what's the difference between the buckle tube and the band uh, it is only the torque so the torque is um, in uh, buckle tube is more uh, negative to compensate the expansion of the blood of the arch. So really it's suggested uh, uh, to use buckle tube of uh, the demo system okay, to get the right to 